Peking. 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 This is everything you need to know about Peking. Peking is essential, not only to get more kills or to make more space for your team, but also to take a hot, stinky, dumpy, wumpy on your opponent. A good peek marks you as the better player and also the better man. Let's really quick go over some baseline fundamentals. So peeking in CSGO is where you have cover and then you jiggle out and you look and you get information or you swing out from that cover. So it's essentially removing yourself from cover and exposing yourself to potential danger. So the goal of of peeking is that you want the fight or the fights that follow your peek to be as easy as possible for you to get the kill and as hard as possible for the enemy to kill you. Lastly, it's important to mention peeker's advantage. Now this could be its own video, but essentially because of this awesome tick rate system we have, the person who peeks, who swings out, will have a slight advantage where they're going to see the opponent before the opponent sees them. I know it's weird, but it's just the reality of things. And this is actually exaggerated the higher your ping is. So if you have 100 ping, that peeker's advantage is going to be accentuated for you when you're swinging, but it's also going to be accentuated for enemies when they're swinging you. So there's just a little info for you on that. So to help you take these hot, stinky, dumpy wumpies on your opponents i'm going to give you eight do's of peeking these are things that you want to and need to incorporate into your peeking and then i'm also going to give you eight don'ts these are things you should avoid or maybe use just very sparingly the first do of the day is to jiggle angles and this is super powerful for two reasons now the first reason why jiggling is so powerful is because it's a great way to get information and this is why sometimes you'll see people at higher levels or the pro level just jiggle with their knife out. They're not even expecting to fight. They don't even want to fight. They're just going to jiggle for info. And so you don't even have to jiggle out to see the person because if you look at somebody close to the wall, I couldn't see the person CT from there, right? But I can see their elbow. So a lot of times you can bait people into trying to shoot you with those quick little jiggles where you can't see them, but they can see your elbow or part of your body. And that gives you great info on where they are. So just the knowledge that somebody is CT is so big if you're about to hit B. And with jiggling for information, it's also information for your own fight. So if you have your gun out and you're ready for a fight and you jiggle out a little bit and I see the person, that information can then tell me where I should put my crosshair. So for example, if he's crouched, then I can lower my crosshair and be ready for a fight. So it not only informs you on where they are, but it can also inform you on those micro decisions of are they crouching, where should my crosshair be, and that can help you win more fights too. Now the second reason jiggling is so strong is because it can make the fight really difficult for your opponent. So if you're jiggling like that where you just expose a little bit of your body, your opponent is going to have a hard time knowing where to put their crosshair, they're going to have a hard time knowing when you're going to swing, and then boom, you swing and then you kill them. It can make the fight really difficult for them and I'm sure somebody's done this against you and it's kind of infuriating. So incorporate this into your game. The second do is maybe the most important but also the most basic and that is to peek using A and D and your counter strafing. So try to use W as little as possible in your peeks. Now I made a whole ass video about counter strafing. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that after you've watched the entirety of this video liked and commented and subscribed. So I'm not going to go too deep into it, but the point here is that you want to be in full control of your character. And if you're peeking using diagonals, using W and A at the same time, W and D at the same time, you're not going to be in full control of your character. So you want to create a horizontal line that you're peeking on for your peaks. Boom, boom, boom. The point here is follow that horizontal line. The third do is to pre-fire angles when appropriate. And here's an explanation of when you should be pre-firing angles. Pre-firing is an incredibly strong tool to use to not only get an edge on your opponent and maybe kill them before they can even say, oh my God, you're a shitter, but it's also great just for clearing angles. So to pre-fire, you need to have solid crosshair placement or else your pre-fires will be nothing else but some warning shots. Pre-firing is best to do on angles that are very commonly played. So you see long, or as us Americans say, arch. This is a super common angle that you're gonna see. And so it's pretty safe to assume that there's a high likelihood of somebody standing there and holding that angle. 
so you want to pre-fire when there's little risk associated with it. One risk is the information that you're giving your opponent when you pre-fire. So when I pre-fire Arch, that's going to tell somebody on A that, hey, I'm in middle and I think there might be a guy Arch. So let's say that A players are playing one site, one mini pit, and one had to rotate over to B. So now they know that we don't have Arch control and they don't have to worry about a flank CT for a while because I'm telling them, I think there might be an enemy arch by shooting there. That's going to give them some good information. So be careful with when you're doing it and what information you're giving the enemy by pre-fire. Along with this, pre-fires are best just to do in tiny little jiggle peaks so that your enemy can't really react to them, right? It's super fast, pretty risk-free, but if you swing out and pre-fire at too wide of an angle and you miss, you're probably going to die. So when you, if you're planning on doing an actual swing, I wouldn't pre-fire. I would just be ready for that fight. Do number four four is to practice your crosshair placement for your peaks. The success of your peaks is going to be synonymous with the quality of your crosshair placement. Now crosshair placement probably will be an entirely different video because it's it's a huge subject but real quick a great way to practice it is to jump into YPRAC, go into the peak mode and this is going to put all sorts of bots at all sorts of angles and this is a great way to practice knowing where to put your crosshair for different peaks. One really important aspect of crosshair placement that I don't see being talked about enough is that past interactions, guesses should inform your crosshair placement. So you should come to these little guesses of, I think because it's an eco, maybe I think they're gonna play ninja and hide here. And so you have your crosshair ready for there. So it's not only a mechanical thing, it's a huge mental and game sense thing of having an idea of where the enemy is going to be. Do number five, and this is a cool one, is to use the Xantara's Peak. And here's how to do the Xantara's Peak. The Xantara's Peak, we all want to do it. It's the ultimate dumpster on your opponent thing in CSGO. Here's the formula for the Xantara's Peak. It's speed, wide swing, crosshair placement. The Xantara's Peak helps me highlight a really important aspect of peaking, and that's your character velocity. So if you look at the top left of the screen, you'll see under vel velocity that's my character's speed so with a gun out the max is 215 and if we start here and we strafe out you'll see how long it takes for me to accelerate up to 215. it's i'm almost like halfway through mid by the time i get there and so to do the xantar's peak you need to be going fast and that means you need to be going at 215. so if i peek out from here looking top mid I'm not going to be going that max speed, right? Because I'm still accelerating up to 215. But if I start back here, swing out, boom. That way, by the time I swing out, I'm going at 215. So then that can make it a Xantara's peak because I'm wide swinging at that peak speed. So that covers the first part of the equation of speed plus wide swing plus crosshair placement. And the other two are pretty straightforward, right? Wide swing and crosshair placement. So if we want to swing out from ramp and I think somebody's about mid sight, I'm going to start from way over here, swing, boom, right? I'm going to swing out super wide. I have my crosshair ready for where I think he's going to be. And then I can stop on a dime with that counter strafing. So try it out, practice. Do number six, so important is to use utility to make your peaks easier. Flashes, nades, mollies, smokes, even decoys can be used to make fights way more favorable for you. Now, flashbangs are pretty obvious. You know, the enemy being fucking blind, yeah, that helps. <laughs> smokes and mollies are a little bit more nuanced. They're amazing for eliminating space for you to get peeked from or for you to have to worry about, you know? So if you smoke CT, you don't have to worry about peaking CT, you only have to worry about the rest of the angles on B. And obviously a molly, let's say somebody's new box and I molly new box, and then I swing as they're having the panic swing out of that molly, that's a very favorable fight for me because I'm forcing the fight. I'm doing it on my terms. Now this is pretty basic and I'm essentially explaining like 
the entire utility of utility. What's the purpose of utility? Is to make fights easier, is to create space, and is to close off space for the enemies. So the big thing here really is just to use your utility. Stop dry peeking so much. Use your flashes, smokes, learn utility. Go watch all of my videos all at once in one day. Use your utility. Do number seven is kind of a higher level one, and that is to unshift for your peaks while remaining silent. Now, shift walk peaks aren't very good. They're very slow, especially if you start them around the angle that you're going to peak, right? Because of that acceleration that we looked at with the Xantara's peak. So it's pretty easy for this guy to kill me because he can see my shoulder peeking out before I can see him. So instead of doing that, when we want to remain silent but still peak, we're going to let go of shift and do a regular peak, but just not peek out very far because if you peek out too far, that's when a footstep happens, right? But it's pretty insane the distance you can peek without making a noise. See, I'm not making any footsteps here. Oh, there is one, but it's a pretty good amount of distance. So throw in these peaks when you're shift walking, when you're trying to be sneaky beaky, you know, increase that velocity, that, that speed of your character to make your peaks harder to deal with while remaining silent. Do number eight, and this is gonna transform your CT gameplay, and that's to turn holds into peaks on your ct side you should be turning a lot of your holds into peaks so let's say i'm playing in apps i'm holding hallway and i want to hold this angle of somebody coming upstairs now this is a super easily pre-fired angle right a lot of people are going to be ready for this fight but if i hide here right they can't see me and then swing out come back and i just check for information i have my crosser ready in case they are there and I do that every, say, five seconds. Then somebody who's coming up hallway, maybe they'll clear this and they'll say, okay, they're not there. And then they'll start walking up, doing something else. And they're not ready for a fight when I jiggle out and get that easy kill. And this is applicable to like everything, dude, as a CT, almost everything. So like if you're playing pit, you know, peak every five to 10 seconds and turn that hold into a peak. So play around with it, get a feeling for it and apply it into your games. Good job, you've made it through the do's. Now let's dive in into the do nots. Don't wide swing without knowing why you're wide swinging. The first thing you should consider when you're thinking about should I wide swing is, am I going to be traded? Is there an opportunity for me to be traded here? And this is because wide swinging is essential for entrying. So if I'm trying to entry onto the site, I'm gonna wide swing, expose myself to a ton of angles so then even if I die, I'm able to, to locate where the person is on site that killed me so that the rest of my team can swing out and trade me. The second thing you should consider when you're considering wide swinging is do I know where the enemy is? So let's say somebody gives me the information. Okay, there's one triple and he's the only guy on A. Okay, that means that I can wide swing without fear of getting killed by all the other angles that I'm exposing myself to. So that means that when you know where somebody is and you know that you're not going to get peaked from a, a different angle or that other people aren't holding you from different angles that you're going to expose yourself to, a wide swing is a great option and it's essentially a Xantara's peak at that point. And the third thing to think about is, am I just better than them? Sometimes you're having a really good day, right? And even if you're wide swinging and putting yourself in a bad spot without knowing where they are, they get the first shot on you, you're just better and you're just able to flick onto them and then insta-kill them before they can kill you. And so sometimes when you're feeling really confident, you can just start wide swinging willy-nilly. Unless I'm forgetting something and let me know if I am, these are the main times you're going to be wide swinging. Outside of these reasons to wide swing, try to limit the number of angles you're exposed to as you're peaking potential spots that your enemy is. Don't number two is that you shouldn't be crouch walk peaking the left side angles. And let me explain what I mean by this. In CSGO, your viewpoint is from your forehead. So imagine one big eye in the middle of your forehead and that's where your, your viewpoint comes from. That's what we see. That's also where your bullets come from. And this means that when you're close to a wall or you're peaking angles, that parts of your body stick out that you don't want to stick out. So if we put a bot here, boom, look at how much of him is sticking out and he can't see me at all and this is due to the fact that when you're peaking left side angles more of your body sticks out to the left side than the right side 
So when you combine that fact with the slow movement speed of a crouch walk, that means that your opponent is going to have plenty of time to see you coming because they see your elbow, they see your knee before you can actually see them. So it's a terrible kind of peak. I mean, so I've gotten dumpstered by it a couple times, not going to lie. So maybe there are times where it could be used and it's kind of unexpected, but really, I wouldn't use this all too much. Don't number three. Please stop dry peeking oppers. I know I want to do it so badly. I still do it pretty often. It's an ego thing. It's like if I shit on this opera, just dry swing, oh my god, it's gonna feel so good. But it doesn't work out most of the time, and here's how you can improve that. Pretty simple one. Just use your utility. And the thing about operas is that utility is a little more effective against operas than it is against riflers. And this is for two reasons. Number one, when they're scoped, it's harder to avoid flashes. You have to flick like crazy. Your movement isn't as good as, as if you're just standing with a rifle. And number two, your viewpoint is narrower. Narrower. You're only looking through the scope. So if this guy scoped in on me and I throw a flash like that, he's not even going to see that flash. Even though it's right in front of them, you know, if you're holding a rifle and you're looking here, you're going to see that flash from a mile away. But with a scope, you're not going to see it. You may hear it, you're going to hear the click, and that might be, you know, I'm going to turn for that. But regardless, you're still not going to see it. And so please, please, please just use your utility. Use some basic flashes. They don't have to be set lineups. They don't have to be insane. Just use them to disrupt the opera's positioning and flow. Don't number four is that you shouldn't make peaks obvious. And what I mean by this is giving sound cues or making it easy for your opponent to know that you're about to peak so let's say we jump into apps and we're just gonna run through here and go peek this now he's gonna hear that from a mile away he's gonna hear us in bedroom running through here and he's gonna be so ready for that fight but instead if we jump into apps and then we shift walk and go a bit slower and then maybe we jiggle this a little bit show a little bit of our shoulder get him ready boom that can be really surprising that can be harder to deal with but if we just kind of mindlessly run around and run into peaks without doing anything to make it harder for the opponent, we're gonna lose a ton of fights. Hey, you watched the whole goddamn video, thank you. You should join my Discord, you should subscribe if you haven't. I talked about counter strafing a lot, so go check out my counter strafing video if you haven't seen it yet. Have a great day, goodbye.